Howdy heck and hello H2O's, Roller Bros, and Amelia Phillips alike. I'm your guide Q, and it's nice to be back doing a wholesome video after yesterday's very serious video about lollies. Also, major announcement, uh, the uh, collaboration I made with Crimson Studios and Nicholas DiOrio about the infamous Ingham family is now up on his channel. I will link that in the comments. My section of that video is like half of it. It's like a 34 minute video and my section's like 18 minutes. We all worked super hard on it so it would mean a ton to me if you went over and checked it out and left a comment or something like that but with that said let's get into some r slash quit your bs and some r slash that happened come on netflix released a new horror film veronica and it is said to be the scariest film ever made it is based on an absolute real story even science is unable to explain the deaths in this netflix said only one out of 100 people are able to watch the full film experts are suggesting that it can kill weak-hearted people. Are you brave enough? Okay, it's said to be the scariest film ever made. You gotta hype up your movie. It's based on an absolute real story. You know, a lot of films use that tactic to sell their movie and make it seem more realistic. Only one out of a hundred people are able to watch the full film. I'm pretty sure more than one out of a hundred people were able to make it to the end of Two Girls, One Cup, and Three Guys, One Hammer. I don't think this movie's scaring off 99% of people. Three and a half months of IF and keto. I'm finally at the 50 pounds lost mark. How about you actually go do the work instead of stealing other people's pictures? I really have to ask, what does somebody have to gain out of posting somebody else's pictures for a weight loss comparison other than just pure karma? Like, don't you feel bad that everybody's congratulating you for achieving something you never achieved? Help, my mom got cancer last summer and now she's saying she's seeing angels and Jesus told her, My child, it's time for you to come home. I'm losing my sanity. Now my mom is actually gonna die now. Anyone who can calm me down, is this for real? I don't know whether to believe you or not. There's so much inconsistencies in what you have posted. Sometimes you're at school or at uni or have done nine years as a lawyer, have 400k in student loan debt, are 40 years old, married, boyfriends, lonely. Your mom called you a whore. It's all very strange. I hope your mom is okay, but it's a bit crappy if you're doing it for karma or for whatever weird reason. I know this might sound crazy and far-fetched, but this happens to people all the time. Something similar actually happened to me. I went to school for eight years to get a PhD in lawyering, and I racked up a bunch of student loan debt in that time, and then, you know, I was working minimum wage in the lawyering industry for nine years, and so I had to go back to school for something that paid well, so I got an art history degree, and now everything's racking up, I'm married, I've got a boyfriend, but I'm still not feeling whole inside, and to top it all off, my mom called me a whore and I got, okay, this is a bit is dead, let's move on. Here's why celebrities love Keto HD. No, I didn't need to exercise every day. I've always liked to jog every few days, but I didn't. He noted, the only thing I did was take these pills. Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith himself replies, this is pure BS. I never did keto. I went vegan and then joined Weight Watchers US to lose my weight. That quote doesn't even sound like me either, as I've never jogged and the only pills I take are heart related. I'm pretty sure they made it up. I feel like Homer when he found Mr. Sparkle. I think the funniest thing about this is that Keto HD unintentionally gave Kevin Smith the perfect opportunity to plug Weight Watchers, the company that he's an ambassador for. Destroying your own company's credibility while simultaneously Simultaneously giving free promotion to another weight loss company. That's just poetic. This white lady at the car dealership saw me looking at a Corvette and I heard her make a comment to the salesman about me not being able to afford it. I purchased the car with cash, paid the car insurance for a full year, and gave it to her as a gift. Don't play with me, ho. So you're telling me that a racist woman claimed that you couldn't afford a car because of the color of your skin, and your response to that was to buy her a car? Like, even if this is real, you made a terrible terrible decision. Why not just buy the car for some non-racist person to shove it in her face? LMAO. One time in high school, I snuck my BF, and my mom decided to be sick for four days, and I couldn't sneak him back out, so I had him hidden in my closet and had to feed him Oreos for four days. Okay, so you're telling me this dude was peeing in bottles for four days in your closet, and you couldn't even, like, whip up a turkey sandwich for the dude, you just had to feed him Oreos? The dude's on, like, a four-day sugar rush crash cycle. Just, you're just a bad girlfriend, or a liar. After years of slaving away at a minimum wage job and fulfilling my drug addictions, I'm clean now, I was able to afford my first gaming PC. 
You're 16. How old were you when you built your first gaming PC in this photo? 14, according to your comments. At 14, you had multiple years of slaving away at a job and multiple drug addictions? Sadly, we do live in a world where a 12-year-old could hypothetically be addicted to multiple drugs and have to work a minimum wage job under the table to, like, you know, make ends meet for his family or something, but I'm pretty sure in that scenario, your number one priority wouldn't be getting a gaming PC, it would be keeping a roof above your head. Doctor, you lost 12 pounds since the last time I saw you. Me. Coffee. Coffee? Coffee. Pulls out a pack of skinny coffee and shows her the ingredients. Sign me up. And that's how my doctor became my customer today. I don't know, something tells me a doctor might be a proponent of, like, healthy diet and exercise and wouldn't really be a huge fan of some creepy, sketchy, quick fix like skinny coffee. It's like a doctor saying, oh yeah, don't worry about eating vegetables or cardio, just take this hydroxy cut, you'll be fine. I asked for mom for $400 and she was like, okay, but please tell me this isn't drug money. And I was like, no, I'll send you a picture of what I buy once I get it. So I bought a stripper pole, sent her a picture, and all she said was, God, I wish you would have just bought Coke. What a, what a terrible mother, even in the context of this fake story. Like, she wants you to buy a consumable drug instead of a tool that you can actually use to make money. Like, what a silly mother. This is a comment left on an article in which doctors share their experiences of dealing with patients who had Googled all of their symptoms and stuff before they had come in. Funny, because I've had plenty of doctors Google things right in front of me in the exam room in order to check my symptoms and diagnose me. I had to teach a doctor about asthma and then demonstrate how to use a peak flow meter to check my breathing. She even called in a couple of nurses to watch and be educated by me when I was having a severe asthma attack while pregnant and needed their help. They acted so amazed and said, wow, we didn't learn any of this in medical school. If this was actually true, the like clinic or hospital or doctor's office you went to would be swimming in so many malpractice suits they wouldn't even be able to run a business. Hardly. I've used women on four continents. What always boggled my mind was the willingness of women to be used as a piece of meat. Most of them are now married to some schmuck that has no idea and probably gets vanilla sex once in a blue moon. Nowadays, I just rent rooms in my house to Airbnb female tourists. It's still fun for me how easy it is to get them to perform extreme sex acts. They're so excited when they discover the playroom. Hee <laughs> hee. This guy sounds like he just read Fifty Shades of Grey and wanted to pretend that was his life. So the story below accompanies this picture. It will come into play later. I was picking out some mangoes at the grocery store today and a young guy got my attention. I thought he was going to hit on me, but then I noticed the concerned look on his face as he started to say he wasn't sure if I was aware, but my shorts were riding up my ass and he thought I should know. I kindly told him I was aware of my general appearance and that it was not his place to tell me that, and he wandered away with a confused look on his face. I was internally shaking, but was able to realize how silly and inappropriate his comment was. A few minutes later by the avocados, a lady named Mars told me how much she liked my outfit, and after a few words she asked if she could have a hug. I asked her how her day was, and she said not great, but thanked me for my good energy. She had tears in her eyes when she pulled away from the hug, and it made me so happy to be able to share that positive moment with her. Having my appearance policed has historically been a huge trigger for me, but I'm so proud of the progress I've made on that front. I've been publicly slut-shamed while wearing a long sleeve pleated denim dress from my neck to my ankles, so let me tell you, it doesn't actually matter what you're wearing or how much of an ass they can see. It's just a ploy. Here's a picture of my outfit today, that from the reactions I received that brought people joy, and maybe it or my ass will bring you some too. Okay, so I've got a few things to talk about in regards to this story. One, first off, I don't think that dude was trying to slut shame you if that interaction happened with him. I think he was just concerned that maybe you weren't aware that your shorts were riding up. I personally would be extremely appreciative of somebody letting me know that information. Maybe that's just me. Let me know if you were out in public and your shorts were riding up your ass, would you want somebody to mention it to you in hopes that maybe you could fix that if that wasn't the look that he was that you were going for. I don't think he was trying to like offend you there or call you a slut. Next, the interaction with the woman named Mars seemed super sketchy and made up, and the whole being slut-shamed while wearing the most conservative thing you've ever heard of. 
also seems pretty made up to me. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Two things I didn't know until I was yesterday years old. One, Memorial Day was started by African Americans honoring fallen Union soldiers. Two, the Statue of Liberty was gifted to America to celebrate freed slaves, not immigrants. Erasure is real, y'all, but that part we knew. Just wait until you Google what the original Statue of Liberty that got refused by America looked like. For those of you who don't want to look it up yourselves, the original is on the left and the copy is on the right. So this person is saying that the original Lady Liberty was a black woman and the Americans refused it and got it replaced with one with a white face. This person responds by saying, guys, this has been thoroughly debunked since 2000 and it does the statue on the left there a huge disservice to treat her as an unwanted copy. That's Lady Liberty of St. Martin, an homage from 2007, post-dating the debunking even. That was dedicated to the anniversary of the ending of slavery there. The Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor is a representation of Libertas, the Roman goddess of freedom with bonus American iconography. However, Lady Liberty in New York is not based on a white woman either. She's a Muslim Arab woman, at least in terms of the modeling of her face. Her face was reused from an abandoned project to build a colossal statue of a modern Egyptian Arab peasant woman near the Suez Canal, as verified by the Smithsonian no less. While she wasn't originally dedicated specifically for immigrants, the poem The New Colossus was added specifically because of the position she occupied in the harbor and the symbolic visual power she would have on immigrants coming in. The author, Emma Lazarus, was Jewish. It's important to fight back on the whitewashing of history because it happens left and right, but it shouldn't happen at the cost of misinformation that treats Lady Liberty of St. Martin as an unwanted prototype rather than a powerful monument in her own right, and ironically claims that she's now a white woman when she's not, while also ignoring the powerful influence of the Jewish American community on the final version. So, as the commenter here has thoroughly explained, like, your heart's in the right place, you're trying to do something good, but when you have misinformation like this, you end up doing a disservice to the movement that you're trying to progress. So guys, it would really mean the world to me if you would check out that collab I did with Crimson Studios about the controversial Ingham family over on his channel. Uh, also, feel free to check out my video on Lolis yesterday. That was a tough video to make, but uh, I want to hear your opinions on that if you're interested in checking that out. Otherwise, just skate on the best of your abilities, guys. Make sure you're drinking more water. I really hope you're staying safe out there, and I'll see you very soon.